Good morning. Many times people come into shul and they look at this uh, numbers sign and they say, what is that, the score? And I tell them it's the page numbers for the synagogue prayers. But I want to point out one word in this week's Torah portion that could be a transformative word, both in the positive sense, but unfortunately it could be very detrimental and harming in its effects when it's misused in an improper way. This week's parish is the story of the 12 spies and 10 of them come back with a terrible report about the land of Israel. But what's interesting is they start off very positive. They say it's a beautiful land, this is the fruit, look how luscious the fruits are. They say it's a land flowing with milk and honey, but then they say one word, Ephes, but, however, and then they go on to describe how the people are giants and they're so mighty that we'll never be able to conquer them. And that word but could be the most harmful word in the English vocabulary. Think about anything that happens and you look at the positive, but then you say, but this is a, not good. And instead of focusing on the good, you immediately turn your attention to the bad. Imagine a child does something well or a spouse does something well and you say, wonderful job, but the minute you say but, you now robbed the person from all of the joy of what they've accomplished. But here's the fascinating thing. The word in Hebrew for but that's used in this week's Parsha is Ephes. The spies say the land is beautiful, flowing with milk and honey, Ephes, but the people are very mighty. What's interesting about the word Ephes, which is the Hebrew word in this week's Parsha for but, is that Ephes is also a number, it's the number zero. Why is Ephes both the word but and the word zero? Because when you use the word but, you turned everything good into a zero. Now instead of appreciating all the good, you're just focused on the bad and you turned everything into a big zero. But here's the fascinating thing. In the Aleinu prayer, which was actually composed by Joshua when the Jewish people arrived in the land of Israel, the prayer that we leave the synagogue with each and every time we pray, we sing the words, Emes Malkeinu, Ephesulaso, which means our king, God, is true. Ephes, there's nothing but God. And here we use the word but in the positive sense. When we look at the challenges of life or those things in the world that perhaps aren't positive, we have to take the attitude of, you know what? There's nothing but God. And therefore, there's nothing to fear. We have trust and faith and hope in Hashem. And this but is the opposite of the one that the spies used. Those spies of Moses said, yes, the land is good, but the negative overtakes and undermines all the good. But the spies of Joshua and the prayer that Joshua composed represents the successful capture of the land of Israel. That came about through an attitude of faith and trust in God that instead of having fear of the inhabitants, they said, God, our king, is true, and there is nothing but God. Ephes, there is zero but God, and therefore I have trust in Hashem. And with that confidence, they were able to enter into the land of Israel. And that's the story of the Jewish people. When we realize, Ephes, Zulasi, there is nothing but God, then there is nothing to fear. As someone said, don't tell your God how great your problems are, tell your problems how great God is. It's a story about a teacher in an Israeli classroom who two kids got into a fight and one kid said to the other, Ata Efes, you're zero. The teacher walked over and everyone expected the teacher to punish the kid. But the kid's teacher said, you know what? He's right. You are Efes, you are zero. The kids were shocked that the teacher would agree with that terrible remark that the kid made. But then the teacher went on to say, and you know what, Ata Ephes, you're also nothing. And Ata Ephes, and you're nothing. And pointed to every kid in the class and said, you're all Ephes, you're all zeros. And then the teacher pointed to himself and said, and I'm also Ephes, I'm also zero. But then the teacher said to the students, you know, what happens when you put a one in front of a zero? Suddenly it becomes 10. And if you put a one in front of two zeros, it's a hundred. And in front of three zeros, it's a thousand. And then eventually a million and a billion and a trillion. The teacher said, that's the point. We're all Ephes, but that's only when we're without God, without the one above. When we put Hashem before us, when we attach ourselves to God, then our zeros can turn into the greatest numbers in the world. And that's the lesson of Ephes. 
when you think of Ephes in the positive sense, there's nothing but God, and you put Hashem before you, then you know that anything is possible. And with that confidence, you live your life with joy. And like the spies of Joshua, you overcome all inhibitions, all insecurities, all challenges, and you succeed, and you make the impossible possible. Have a wonderful day.